My name is Brian Borkholder, and I'm the Ceded Territory Fisheries Biologist here at Fond du Lac. Tell me what, what the regulations are now for Mille Lacs and how that affects band members and non-band members right now. Well, this year the total allocation for harvest for walleye was cut in half. So it's last year it was 500,000 pounds, this year it's 250,000 pounds. It sounds like a lot, but historically it's, it's still in the range of what we've seen. But it is quite a bit lower than it's been for the last 13, 14 years. Why cut in half? Um, our assessment nets seem to indicate that the walleye population is lower than it's been for the last 13, 14 years. But what we don't know is if that's real or an artifact of what's going on in Mille Lacs. Um, we assess Mille Lacs using assessment gill nets and we base the population on what we see in those assessment gill nets that are set in August, September. What we've seen the last couple of years is a continuing decline in those catch rates, which are interpreted to mean that the walleye population is declining. And that could be real. I mean, the, the, the bands and the state have both been harvesting on the same portion of the population instead of um, spreading out harvest over the entire range of what we see in Mille Lacs, we have been focusing on the same 15 to 18 inch fish so we may have over harvested that portion of the population too high over the last decade um, what we also might have seen or, or be witnessing is I'm trying to think of how to say this the easiest most understandable way um, it could be artifacts of what's been going on in the lake as well as how we've been managing or how the state has actually been managing other species within the lake. Zebra mussels showed up six or seven years ago and they are now at the level where they are filtering the lake at a very high rate. Uh, they filter out phytoplankton and zooplankton which makes the water look clearer. What could be happening is that walleyes are seeing the assessment gill nets and are avoiding them. Uh, we see lower catch rates. The data suggests that the population of walleye is lower when in actuality the walleye are avoiding the gill nets because they're seeing them because the water is that much clearer. So we don't know if gill net catchability has changed and we are assuming that gill net catchability is the same as it's been for the last 40 years. If gill net catchability has changed and we are assuming that it's the same then what, what we're seeing is a perception that the walleye population is lower and thus that's why the allocation this year is a lot lower than it has been but it could be walleyes just avoiding the lake or avoiding the gill nets and the walleyes are still at relatively higher level safer levels but we don't know that and we'll find out that this spring if the lake ever opens up and we can get in there and do some, a mark recapture population estimate another thing that could be happening is for the last decade, decade and a half, the state has been managing Mille Lacs as uh, one of the trophy northern lakes. So um, harvest for northern pike has been very low relative to previous years, and right now the northern pike population is as high as it's ever been. It's at record highs. The tulipy population is down quite a bit because of the last several warm summers have led to high tulipy die-offs as well as very low recruitment for young tulipy. So there's nothing for the northerns to eat. And um, they're hungry. Yeah, They'll eat what's available. And that's known. That's sort of a known thing. That well, that we happens. are going to be pumping stomachs this year to look at what portion of the diet may be age zero and, and age one walleyes. Mm -hmm. And we've, we've pumped stomachs before. We did a big diet study last year on Fish Lake looking at largemouth bass predation upon baby walleyes. Um, so it's something that we're looking at, and we're going to be pumping stomachs from big walleyes, northerns, and smallmouth this summer. Right now, and actually there's reason to believe that there's a very large number of big walleye in the lake, so in years where we don't have good perch production, the large walleyes themselves could be eating a lot of their own young. Cannibalism is very common in walleyes, so we see a lot of age zero and age one walleyes every fall they disappear we're not seeing them recruit to the fishery we think that predation is also contributing to the apparent decline in the walleye population there's so much there but there's a lot 
I want to go back to the invasives, the uh, the zebra mussels, and I mean, what other invasives are there, and what impact is that having on malax? And I guess this could broaden out to other bodies of water. Um, there's quite a few invasives in malax. I think the biggest ones that are going to be affecting the fish population will be the zebra mussels and then the spiny water flea, the bithotrephes. That's a um, a predaceous cladosaurin that's competing for um, zooplankton with the uh, age zero yellow perch, age zero walleye, age zero tulipy. All the young fish need the zooplank- zooplankton to start out life. And, and zooplankton, those are very, very small, like life forms, or what is that? It's small crustaceans that are bite sized for age zero fish. But the bithotrephes is a predaceous zooplankton that consumes a lot of them also. So there's competition there for food. And you mentioned with the mussels that they may be, um, in a layperson's way of saying, they may be clarifying the water, and that's improving visibility for the walleye. And I mean, how do you adjust for that if that's what's happening, as in terms of measuring, you know, walleye behavior or the population? We'll know more about that after this spring. We're going to do a, um, a mark recapture population estimate. We're using shocking boats, and shocking boats don't have the same catchability issues at Gillnet because walleyes don't avoid us like they do gill nets. If we do a population estimate this year and we see walleyes at the same abundance that they have been, say, five years ago when we did the last population estimate, then we can start looking at gill net catchability issues. Right now we have to assume that the walleye population is down and that catchability in gill nets is not what's happening until we get data to suggest otherwise. So it's ca- it's a caution. It's being cautious about um, making sure that the lake isn't, um, for example, overfished. Well, yeah, we, the data that we have suggests that the walleye population is down. And until we get data otherwise, that's what we have to assume. And that's, I mean, we can't assume that gillnet catchability is a factor until we have more data to say otherwise. Is there overfishing? Are humans taking too much harvest from the lake? That could be happening. Um, and what's happened for the last, well, since Malax was litigated, the state was very concerned that the bans did not target spawning females. So all the regulations and gill net sizes were set so that the tribal portion of the take would target males. One male can fertilize multiple females. What's valuable in any fish population is the number of eggs, because the number of eggs are what produce babies. Uh, Sperm is cheap. Eggs are very expensive. So a male can produce way more sperm than females can produce eggs. So one male can fertilize lots and lots of females. So the state was concerned that the tribes target males and leave the females, which is fine. That makes a whole lot of sense. But what's happened, the first uh, five years of this cooperative management, the state did an awful lot of adjustment of their their harvest slots and their their limits to essentially chase a quota is what they were doing. They were chasing their portion of the quota. So they were adjusting their size limits to maximize harvest on the portion of the fish population that was there so that they could get their fish out of there. Resort owners, wanted uh, they wanted stable regulations so that they knew from one year to the next what they could sell to their customers. So 10 years ago, the state acquiesced and settled upon a stable regulation that would, in all likelihood, result in the state not overfishing, and then the the resort owners got their stable regulation. But what they settled on was a very conservative regulation that, at the time, you know, hindsight's 2020, their stable regulation basically was the exact same portion of the fishery that the tribes are harvest or targeting with the gill nets. And the gill net selectivity, highest catchability is dependent upon the size of the gill net, the, the holes in the, in the gill net. So big fish bounce out, small fish squeak through. They really catch what the tribes use is about 15 to 17 inches is the majority of the catch. Well, that's exactly what the state's been harvesting for the last 10 years. So we look at the total population of walleye, and what we agreed on was 24% exploitation. 
which is actually conservative. Uh, Wisconsin manages for 35% exploitation. So 24% should have been very conservative, should not have resulted in overfishing. But when you take 24% of the total biomass and laser focus that down to a very small portion of the population and start whacking 24% of a subset of the population, what you're actually doing is over-harvesting that portion of the population. And in our case, we're over-harvesting the 15 to 17 inch segment of the population. So then now you have much fewer fish recruiting into the larger mature portion of the population. Those that squeak through do very well. They're able to spawn. But right now what we're seeing is a glut of large fish and predominantly large females. We have a lot of large females in the lake. We don't think we're seeing um, a shortage of males yet because we see a lot of age zeros and age ones still every fall. So we think that there's still enough males in the population to fertilize the available females. But I think we're starting to reach that tipping point where we might start seeing declines in reproduction because of over harvest of young, like these smaller males. And one of the questions that comes up continually, and it ends up being kind of a conflict, and sometimes a conflict along racial lines, is the question of are the bands over harvesting? Um, well, if you look at total harvest, do you want totals for the last five years, 10 years, or since 1997? Do you, if you can do. Let's kind of summarize since 97 and then just talk about what's been happening recently. That would be great. All right, so that is, let's just do the last five years. Plot uh, equals sum. All right. Yeah, I, I hear the um, constant con uh, claims that the tribes are the ones over harvesting it because they're fishing on the, sp the spawning grounds. But in reality, a dead fish is a dead fish, whether it's taken in. April, or if it's taken in October, it's not available to spawn. Uh, since we started sharing the resource in Mille Lacs since 1997, the state has harvested 80.2% of the fish by pounds. So the tribes have taken 19.8%. In the last six years, the state has taken 74% of the pounds. The tribes have been taken 26%. So if you look at it pure numbers, I don't believe that the tribes are the ones at fault here. What does it look like for the the Fond du Lac or for the tribal uh, harvest? You know, what what is the outlook for this this coming season? Well, because of how um, poor the assessment nets fished in 2012, the allocation that the state and the tribes agreed to is half of what it's been in the, uh, last year. Essentially, the bands willingly agreed to cut their ha harvest down, and what the bands agreed to was to settle on an allocation for each band based upon the average of their last two years of harvest. Now, the last two years have been garbage. 2010 was a perfect year where conditions and ice out, everything was perfect, and the bands basically took their entire allocation. 2011 was an extraordinarily late ice out. By the time the bands got on the lake, the majority of the walleye population had spawned already, and the bands didn't have access to those fish. In 2012, we had an extraordinarily early season, in fact, the earliest on record, and the walleyes were confused. Uh, the water temperatures told the walleyes to spawn. Photo period said it's too early. They just trickled in over a long period of time, and the bands did not get their allocations. So the bands did agree to take the average of the last two years, which is a concession. The bands may not may not have had to make that concession, but we did. So what it means for Fond du Lac is instead of the last, uh, let's see, the last three years, I believe we were taking about 24,000 pounds, 25,000 pounds was what we could have taken. Last year we took about 14,000 pounds. In 2011 we took about 12,000 pounds. We agreed to take 13,700 pounds this year which is on par of what we've taken the last two years. With the conditions on the lake right now, and we've had, it has, it's been kind of an odd spring. I mean, w I mean, when do you expect that people will be able to get on the lake and, and start harvesting? Oh, I wish you hadn't asked that question, <laughs> because given around about this time, I start fielding an awful lot of questions from band members with that same question. And in fact, I got two yesterday from band members that live 
out of state and they want to plan their vacation. But the fact of the matter is, is if I could predict ice out, I could probably predict stocks and I wouldn't be working here. Um, we have had a very goofy spring. It's, I mean, a year ago at this time, we had lakes opening up. As of last week on Mille Lacs, we still had 33 inches of ice on the lake underneath 22 inches of snow. The sun's not going to penetrate 22 inches of snow. I was at a meeting yesterday planning this mark recapture estimate on Mille Lacs, and most of the state biologists are thinking that we're going to be lucky to be able to get shocking boats on there by May 1st. And the only way we can get on before May 1st is if we start getting 80 degree weather and thunderstorms and not freezing at night. The long range forecast is single digits next, next week. I mean, Mille Lacs is not opening up anytime soon. It's going to be another very late ice out. If it doesn't open by May 1st, there's a high chance that the walleyes will have started spawning under the ice by the time the lake does open and Fond du Lac can get out there. The majority of the population will be done spawning. They'll not be in the shallows anymore. We'll not have access to them. It'll be a very low catch rate again this year. That's what I'm guessing. Unless, of course, the weather changes all of a sudden and we get some thunderstorms and some 80 degree weather and some 45 degree nights because that's what's going to take to get rid of 22 inches of snow and 33 inches of ice. And that makes me think of last year when we had when uh, the sugar bush wasn't that good because it was too warm. So I mean everything's in balance. If it's if the temps are too warm, that affects you know one area of life, and if they're too cool, it affects other areas. I mean it's all it all fits together. It's all tied together, yeah. The lakes in this region, in this uh, on, on the reservations and on the ceded territories, I mean, what is the overarching goal of how they're managed? Well, right now, um, there's not very many walleye lakes here on the reservation. Now, the walleye lakes that I deal with are off the reservation, and they're largely managed for recreational fishery. They're they're managed to provide um, opportunity for band members to fish and the opportunity for band members to catch some decent fish to bring home and put in the frying pan and, and provide food for their family. But they're not managed for trophies. So is there a conflict there? Is there a value or sort of a conflict over competing goals? No, now you're opening up a whole human... That's, that's not a biologist question, I guess. Yeah, that's a human dimensions thing. Um, what's good for you may not be good for me and may not be good for Tom, Dick, or Harry. I mean, everyone's got their own perceptions of what a good fishery is. What a, yeah, say everyone wants different things in a fishery. Some want 30-inch walleye, some want... You know, some want the opportunity to go out and catch one 30-inch walleye. Some want the opportunity to go out and catch 20 16-inch walleyes because they want to put food on the table. That's not biology. That's sociology. That's that's human dimensions. I don't get into human dimensions. <laughs> that would drive me crazy. But that being the case, there are opportunities in the ceded territory for most anglers and band members to find what they are looking for. Um, I know band members that go down to Mille Lacs because they, right now, the last couple of years, has been the opportunity to catch really big fish down there, and they enjoy catching the really big fish. For those that want to head up in the Ceded Territory, there are lakes up in the Ceded Territory, the 54 Ceded Territory, that you have a decent opportunity to catch really big fish. But that being said, there's an awful lot of opportunities to go out and catch a mess of eating size walleye. So it's... It's not that we manage differently, it's just that the opportunities are there to meet different expectations and band members and anglers who do their research can generally find lakes that can meet their desires of what they perceive to be a quality fishing experience. But that's not biology. <laughs> I want to thank you so much for your